Hey guys, it's uh, Simon from Kaiser Vanguard, and we have a podcast today. Uh, we have Max, Dan, Belf, and Rowan with us today. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hi, guys. Right, so we do have a couple of reveals today. But before that, uh, let's see how everyone is doing in our lockdown. Max, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, very well. So, um, this week, not very much Vanguard figures going on. Um, still waiting for the first episode of the new series, which I'm looking forward to. Um, apart from that, just doing some office work and getting some degree work done. Very uh, nice. Uh, what about you, Dan? Uh, not much. I'm trying to catch up with Vanguard and get back into the game a little bit, back into the swing of things. Interesting. What about Belf? Honestly, I've not done like that much Vanguard related this week other than complain about Zazan on the internet. That card is mega broken. But other than that, I've been trying out a few new premium decks, assuming that the card does go. I have very high hopes for Aquaforce. Uh, the new stride's really good. Um, yeah, I've been trying that in a sort of Revon-esque shell. The card is mental. But yeah, other than that, I haven't really been doing much Vanguardy stuff this week. What about you, Rowan? Uh, just zero. All I do is play zero, basically. Uh, it's been the Valentine's Day event all week, so I've been trying to get the um, Asuka and Corin skins for my account. Uh, I haven't done any of it on the account that I actually record for the channel with, because I've sort of been ignoring that until MLB drops. Um, other than that, actual Vanguard-wise, uh, nothing much. I started working on Premium Shadows because I got some cards through the post, so I can actually finish that off now once uh, I actually receive these other cards that I'm waiting for from Belf. If you would like to eventually send those to me, that'd be great. One day. Eventually. Right. Uh, other than that, nothing much. Uh, I think we can just jump straight into the podcast then for new reveals right. for this week. Okay, so the first reveal is uh, Vanguard Zero, which is Rowan's segment. So yeah. I'll pass on to Rowan. So it's not as much of a reveal as it is a, a rata. So in Japan, uh, MLB has been like tier S for Vanguard. So there's like tier S, then tier A, B, C, and blah, 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 blah. Or tier S and then tier 1, 2, 3. So MLB was just the best deck straight up. Uh, because of Wingle Brave, pretty much. The only deck that could counter it was Kagero, because they have a grade 2 which can attack back row rear guards. So, uh, that was their way of getting rid of Wingle Brave. So, it's been eroded. Its original skill was normal Forerunner, and then when it's attack that it boosted hits, you can count blast 1, put him into your soul, search your deck for any grade of blaster. But they've now changed it, so it's now counter blast 2, and you can only get a grade 3 blaster. Well, a grade 3 or greater blaster from your deck. So it means if you can't just get whatever piece you're missing for MLB. It means you have to get your MLB. But it just means that people are just going to be like mulligan their MLB straight back into the deck every game. Or they're just not going to play Wingle Brave anymore. Um, there is another build for Zero, which is um, like Garmor MLB. It's like a mixing where you play Garmor and MLB, which plays a different starter to Wingle Brave which I think we're going to see a lot more of. Um, I think it will impact it a lot. I don't think it's going to be TRS anymore. I think it's going to drop down to the same tier as all the other decks, which is good. Uh, although the other card... Oh, sorry. If, if anyone Does anyone have anything to say about this? Sorry. Um, I think it likes uh, the consistency. It just drops dramatically. It's not going to be as consistent anymore. Yeah, exactly. Because on grade two, you you ride the blaster blade and then you hit, you move the soul, and then you just get the blaster dark, and then you've got like star calls and stuff anyway. But now without Wingo Brave, I think the deck is just not as going to be as consistent to get all the pieces that you need. Yeah. Especially, you, you won't be able to search the the grade twos. You can only search grade threes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was more or less this is just a hit to make sure you couldn't search blaster dark because you already had Gansalot that could search blaster blade. Yeah, and the circle as well could get Blaster Blade. Um, I know that a lot of people were saving up their packs and their gems so they could get MLB at the end of this month, or beginning of next month even, because it comes out on the 1st of June. Um, 
I know that I've seen a lot of people in the Facebook group and a couple of other things where they've been saying that they're just going to ignore MLB now and go for just Shadows or just Kagura, which are also dropping at the same time. I am one of those people. Have you been saving up your packs? Uh, I've got about 40 saved up right now. I haven't uh, opened anything since before like the Kyo event. I just you have have to not been opening to packs. That when you uh, get the chance to as well. When, yeah, you, when, but... when it does drop, it'd be good if you both recorded your monopoly of packs. Yeah, so. that's, that's my plan. So I have three accounts at the moment. I have my main account, the one that I record for the channel, and I've got like a second account which I played with when I got bored. Uh, which is already at Legend, to be fair. But... Um, I'm going to open up my packs on all three of those, probably. Although I haven't actually saved up any on that last account. I've only saved up packs on my first two. But I, I should have a good anywhere. But I think it's between 50 and 100 packs that I've got to open. Which will be good. Um, I'm obviously going to be wanting shadows on my main account. But other than that, I don't really care what I get on the others. Uh, so there was another hit on Zero. Which is that card that I was talking about earlier that can attack the back row. So, as you can see, the old effect is on the right, uh, underneath the card, because it's actually a card that's already out in English, where he used to be Vanguard and Rearguard, he can attack the unit in the back row opposite it, but they've now changed it so it's only Rearguard. So, if you've got a really important starter, you now, if you're playing against Kagura, you just put it behind your Vanguard and it's definitely, it's definitely safe. Uh, unless they can kill it with something else, which I don't think anything else can hit starters right now. I feel like this is a worse hit than the Wingull hit. I know that the Wingull always has a bigger cost and can only search one card now, but I feel like the sole reason for running this really was to snipe Wingull Brave and to destroy starters. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is actually a lot worse now than probably yeah. Wingull Brave's been nerfed. Tejas, he still probably will be played in Kagura for quite a while because he is just a unit that. Because the way Zero works is if you attack the Vanguard, they're going to guaranteed gain 5k, so your Rearguard mm. probably won't be able to attack it anyway. So you'll probably just try and get rid of annoying Grade 1s or Zeros behind the back row, because you've got slightly less Grade 1s in your deck than anything else, because you'll be playing 4 perfect cards, which are also Grade 1s. So you'll yeah. only actually have access to 9 boosting Grade 1s in your deck. So this yeah, guy being able to get rid of those Grade 1s is really good. It's good against uh, 8k vanillas or like Ks that like can move up and swing for 10 by itself. Yeah, exactly. I think this is future proofing as well. Like, uh, it might be linking into something that we're going to talk about in a little bit, but I think a lot of starters are still going to be the forerunner and then jam into soul search top five for a grade three when, like, especially with the limit break cards and the break ride cards that might be coming out at some point soon. I don't know. Um, I think they're just trying to keep starters safe so that starter choice actually matters rather than just, oh, it just gets sniped by Tejas every game. Um, yeah. I mean, there are still a lot of good stars in the game because there's Conroe and Mecha Trainer, which are the same card. So if your opponent yeah. hasn't used the skill of their Conroe or Mecha Trainer yet and they put it on the right or left back row rear guards, then you're probably going to want to hit them with your Tejas. Mm. Um... No, so, um, it's they like nerfing cards instead of like you know restricting cards. Like you can only play two copies or one copy. Yeah, yeah so I'm I think not, that's good. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that though. Like I, I, only I, playing two copies of Blaster Dart, I feel like that the deck will still be like not powerful, but still would be like top. Oh no, I, but, I think MLB would be quite unplayable if you can only play two copies of Blaster Dark. Yeah, because it's basically impossible to find. Yeah, like, there's no specific way to search it outside exactly. of Starcall. I, I know that I only have... Um, I had only two copies of Perfect Riser in my Riser deck for a very long time. And it'd probably be like once in every five games that I'd actually be able to ride my Perfect Riser. So only having yeah. two copies of a card would be awful in this game, I think. Without but, like, with, but with, like, dual links, they just, like, restrict cards, like, one copy per deck, two copy per deck. I think I prefer that over, like, hitting a card and, like... And write the whole thing, and then they have to change like the whole effect of how it works with the gameplay. I see where you're coming from, but also Duel Links does have a lot of a lot more choice in terms of card pool, and most of the cards that do get limited are like staples in every deck or something. You know, like Enemy Controller, I think got limited to two very early on in Duel Links, but that was because everyone was playing three of it in every single deck. Uh, I know that a lot of cards have now been limited because they were making decks too good, but 
I don't think until we get a big enough card pool for zero, I don't think we're going to see anything get limited or semi-limited or anything like that. I think it's just going to be erratas. Because at the moment they're basically erratering skills from the main game into this game to make them work better with this game. Mm. Yeah, like uh, they've been buffing a lot of skills and nerfing a lot of skills. Like I'm, the buffs are insane. I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to play Ezel because it's yeah. Calblast One now. Oh, so good. Yeah, Calblast One is insane for Ezel. It's so good. Uh, I know the Vermilion is also Calblast Two instead of Calblast Three. Is that right? It I used think to be so. Calblast Three. I think. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, it's Calblast Two. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to all that stuff. We're probably not going to get Ezel and Vermilion until. July, I'd say, like first of July, probably we'll get that. Uh, but we'll be looking at all the Shadow, uh, the End, MLB, and also a Jaw Dragon, and also Scarlet Witch Coco, I think, comes out in this next set. But you don't play it anyway, because Sokiomi's is better. But uh, yeah, they're the good things that we'll be looking at for the next set. Uh, I don't know if there was anything else zero. I don't actually know what the next slide up is, but let's. There was. Go ahead and there was the a... the new Kyo event. In Japan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the actual good events that we've had in Vanguard so far have involved us involved us getting cards for clans, other than like the Valentine's Day event that we've got right now, where we just get some skins, which is very boring. Uh, but yeah, I know that I didn't get the full deck on either of the last two clan events. So for Spike Brothers, I think I was missing two General Siegfried and a Skydiver, but I did manage to get the four Juggernaut Maximums. Uh, and then there was also Grand Blue, where I got like three Night Mist and two Ruin Shade. Um, but yeah, they are doing this new event in Japan from uh, the 28th of May, where they are making it so you can still get the old cards, but you can get these new cards that are coming out, which include Dudley Emperor and Jelly Beans, which are two fan favorite cards for this deck, I think. Especially for Jelly Beans, people seem to love Jelly Beans for some reason. It's because Jelly Beans is really good in Premium. Oh, right. Well, because <laughs> um, one of the main Spikes builds in Premium is one that tries to rush GB8 as fast as possible, and the unflip heal trigger from set 13 is a Dudley that you can search with Jelly Beans. Oh, okay. So between that and Mecha Trainer, you can basically get to GB4 for free. So what, what does Jelly Beans do exactly in uh, Normal Vanguard? In normal Vanguard, you put it to the bottom of your deck and search for a grade 2 or lower card with Dudley in its name and add it to your hand. It's basically oh, okay. a lot. Yeah. But it adds good. any Dudley, so uh, you and can add... Three. Yeah, you can add, like, the heal trigger, you could add Dudley Dan, which I know is really good in Zero. Um, I think... I don't like Dudley Dan in Zero, to be honest. I think he's really bad. But, like, he is a card that you still play, but I definitely wouldn't play four of him at all. I'd yeah, I feel like you can now two. play like you can now play like one, and I think with the other Dudley stuff, you'll be able to just fetch whatever you need. Yeah. I think there was like another good Dudley Grade Two in the set that these guys came out in. I can't remember to um, be honest. <laughs> I think there was. Yeah, I think there was a Dudley Grade Two. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I know. The... I know the, uh, okay. Sorry, I, I know that Reckless Express came out in the set that these guys came out in, but we already got yeah. Reckless Express in the first wave of support. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know the main thing that people cared about from the set that these guys came out in was Duke. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I know that Jelly Beans will be good if it's got a similar skill to that just because how good everyone considers Gansalot and Edel Rose, Because you can just make them heal triggers and just shuffle them straight into your deck and then just recycling heal triggers constantly. So if, if you just make your Jelly Beans a heal trigger and just keep on putting them back into deck then that's going to be great for everyone playing Spikes. Um, I'm not particularly looking forward to this event in English. Like, I do like these events, getting being able to get free decks basically, but I, I do get bored of them very quickly. And I'm also not really a fan of Spy Brothers, but we we won't I'm, be getting this event for a long time anyway. Yeah, I'm interested in this event from a visual perspective because it it follows one of my favorite episodes of the original anime, where Kai decides he's going to go to the top of a mountain, fight the abominable snowman, and it's just Kyo. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, we can see that in the logo thing that they've put up there. Where is Kyo wearing this weird scarf thing around his head and some goggles? Uh, it looks like he's also doing some angry thing with his arms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's like the abominable Neo Crusher or something. Oh right, great. Right, so we have finished talking about the Spike Brothers event, and we're moving on to the reveals that we got this week. 
Anybody have any takes on this card? So it's nice to see that they're actually supporting deleters. Um, so I think that this might be a counter pick card. Like if Vanguard had a side deck, this card would probably be quite good, but it doesn't. So its skill is on rear guard during either player's turn. When a player searches their deck for a card, that player has to solve last one. But if you have no soul, then you still get to perform the search. I think that again, this is a counter pick card. It's the kind of thing that you could see in Royal Paladin, like against Royal Paladin, where every time they search their deck, you punish them by making them lose soul. So if say they have no soul, especially against uh, the Alt Mile deck that wants all of its damage face down, because you wouldn't be able to uh, resolve Lever Rot. Uh, it's yeah, it's Lever Rot, not Twin Sword. Um, with the when you have this on rear, if you punish them enough. One thing that I will note is that this only works when you search your deck, so for Gold Paladin-esque effects that like let you look at the top five and stuff like that, this will not trigger. Uh, why, I... why would it uh, stop Liverot? Because obviously Liverot's skill is it's Cataboss 1, search something from your deck to collect your rear guard, and if you have all face down damage, uh, you soul blast instead. But this card says that you can still search even if you have no soul. But it doesn't stop you. It doesn't. It basically, it's if it so takes you down. You'd have to completely wipe out your opponent's yeah. soul beforehand. Yeah, but that's what they'll do when they're counter blasting. They'll be searching with their counter blasts. Yeah, I think I think that that's going to be quite. A, I think it's going to be quite a big ask. I think it's going to. I mean, this take a lot. It'll take a lot to get it, to get it to work. Yeah, the the main reason I put this in is because it's a deleter, so there is some application there and. It was probably one of the more interesting like commons we had revealed this week. Yeah. So I, I just thought it was a reasonable talking point. I it's also 6k for, based. For Royals, this could be really good against something like MLB, where you force your opponent to lose the cards they already have in soul. Ooh, yeah. So that they can't get the, so that the skill gets turned off. I could see it be really good for that. Yeah. It's good against uh, Tristan, because you have to counter blast one to search Blaster Blade. And the soul of uh, Royal Paladin is like really it's expensive, so. Obviously, forcing him to soul last. Mm. It's, it's not going to be great. I don't think he would be too bad if he wasn't a 6k. Like, I think if he I was like think... a solid 7 or 8k, probably 8k would be fine. Just like lob one or two of them into your deck in case your opponent is playing a deck that, sol that searches a lot. Like, I Plus, don't think it would be too bad. I don't think Vanguard is Number really is these kinds that, of uh, but... tax event, uh, effects either. Like where you have to pay an additional cost to do stuff. Yeah. If it didn't have the, you can still search if you have no soul. It would be really good. Oh yeah. It'd be but insane. that bracket has made it a bit poo, in my opinion. Yeah. He he could be good against like dark regulars as well. Like make them struggle to get to that what like thirteen soul is it that they need or something yeah. like that. Yeah. They need thirteen for NLK and. Because they do search quite a bit, if I remember right. If yeah, regulars. they they search specific copies with Emblem Master. But I think that's the only one that they really do specific searches for. Yeah. So with this card, so with this card, it says draw in either player's turn. Is there any card that searches on the opponent's turn? Mm. Uh, there is the G guard again. Yeah, I was about to say the Marin G guard that basically lets you search a PG. Premium card that uh, so standard. I don't think there's anything in standard. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think that, because... I don't think this has much standard application, but it's it's a it's an interesting effect that we haven't really seen before. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very cool. like if we were gonna have, give any clan or sub clan a tax effect or an effect that makes you pay more of a cost, I think Deleters fits it thematically as yeah. like the anti Vanguard clan. Yeah. Uh, right. So that's him done. What else we got? Uh, I don't even remember seeing this guy get confirmed. To be honest. So I have no idea about what this guy is. This card is pretty pack filler, Kagura rare. Um, it's Oddness, Other Dragon, Auto and Vanguard or Rear Guard when it attacks. If an opponent has no Rear Guards during the battle, it gains 5k. And if your opponent calls from hand to Guardian Circle, they have to call two or more. So this is very, like, this is designed for the Blade Master deck as opposed for the Overlord deck. That's the deck that cares about wiping your opponent's entire board in one sweep. This also might be intended to be used with Zanburst in premium because that wipes your opponent's board for free and then gives your grade 3 rear guards plus 10k. Uh, mm -hmm. And this thing gaining plus 10k, a force 2 marker, and forcing your opponent to guard with 2 or more might be kind of interesting. 
But again, this is like, this is just a rare grade three that I don't expect to see much play. But it's it's kind of cool. I'm starting. To, just... I'm starting to get bored of the whole when your opponent cards call uh, your opponent calls hand card from hand to guardian circle. They have to call at least two. Because I feel like they're trying to give that skill to every single clan, and it's just getting a bit boring now for me, personally. I feel like yeah, I'm I think it it's along. to. I think it's to try and combat either the perfect. I think the original reason why they put it into standard was to combat the perfect, the free perfect guards that were given out by Protect, because that two or more ability was only at the start given to a Excel clan and Nova Grappler with Battle Door Fighter, right. and uh, but then. They've just decided, oh, since a bunch of clans are getting, like, we're getting even stronger, like, more hands being built, like, uh, decks in general are drawing more, more cards say draw one, as opposed to what they did before. So I think they're just trying to have it as a general way of guard restrict instead of it saying no zeros, no PGs, which has way more implications to break premium. Hmm. Makes sense. But I think that's just my opinion. Um, on Bushy's general card design in this area. Yeah, I feel like they need to stop punishing uh, Protect. I, I was about to say the exact same thing, yeah. <laughs> protect has really started to drop off a bit. Like, we do see, obviously, later on in this uh, thing, there is more Protect stuff that got revealed today. We're going to see that it, they are trying to push Protect 2 a bit more. Protect and, like, 1 is being left behind in the dust. Yeah, that's what I think. I think they're, like, sort of killing off Protect 1 by making Protect 2 good. The, uh, the only other thing is uh, this doesn't really care about Protect 2 because it only works if your opponent has no rears. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, if your this opponent's is, this using... Is a pack, this is a pack for the card. It's not the same as yeah. for, like... Uh, is it Dragonic Overlord that you have to... One of the Dragonic Overlords? What is it that, what is it that the Kegger already have that makes them really bust to make sure you have to call multiple cards together? Uh, oh, it's a very good thing Dragonic Overlord. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a grade two ah. at the end that you put it into the soul, and it gives the battle door fighter effect to yeah, your. I mean, that end, one's ridiculous. Which you'll be attacking three times anyway. Yeah. Which yeah is awful. But imagine having this rear guard with that skill as well. Mm -hmm. Literally every single attack is going to be uh, two or more cards to guard with, which means you've got to have at least ten cards in your hand, which are all yeah. going to have to be able to stop these attacks as well. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah, I could see him being pretty annoying in the end Toxic. if uh, people would want to play with that. Although, with the cross coming out, I doubt people are going to be playing the end anymore. Uh, unless the cross, since the cross uh, is said to get the effects of all other overlords, unless it somehow copies overlords from the soul and then you can, like, copy specific ones. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it'll be like the original the cross and it'll have a specific interaction with the end because it was the original Maybe. leading mate. I don't know. But uh... it still wasn't revealed this week. Nope. Sure. Kind of sucks. So, what else was revealed this week is the uh, Sentinel criticals for Kagero, Dimplis, and Link Joker. The artwork on these is amazing. These look Sweet. so pretty. Yeah, I agree. Really, gonna... especially Janet. I think Janet looks amazing. They're gonna it's look so the nice in SP, and they're gonna be so expensive in SP. I like the Dimension Police one. Yeah, we also saw today the special, the SP sets. Which we'll be getting into later, but spoiler alert, these are not in them. Which means that if these are getting an SP, they're going to be just straight up SPs from PAX. Which means they're probably going to be quite hard to get. Very expensive. Yeah. I can't wait to spend money for a playset of Janet's. Mm, yeah. Not ready. You're very I'm much the ready. kind of person who likes to... I mean, these are going to be... I assume deck. these will be about £30 each in SP. Minimum, I'd say. Yeah. Um... There's not much else to say about these. I like the idea of Sentinel crits. I think they're really cool, and I think it's gonna work. They're gonna work really well in some decks and not others. Yeah. For instance, Oracle Think Tank, which are already only plays maybe two perfect guards in a deck. Like a lot of them play just ten crits and two perfect guards, or two draw PGs anyway. The so they'll thing... probably just play these instead. Yeah. The only thing that I've seen is that. So far, they've only given these PG crits to Force Clans. We just need them to confirm that OTT is getting one instead, unless OTT gets a different kind of one, like maybe a 30k draw with no discard, or uh, a th like a 30k heal sentinel or something like that, which would be terrible, but I wouldn't put it past Bushy Road at this point to design something like that. Oh, um, I, we, I didn't yeah, we realize just... that, that they don't yeah, give it to the Forces. Because they only gave it to the three Force Clans in Tri-3, and then these are the only ones that have been revealed so far. And the oh, only right, non-Force yeah. Clan in this set is Oracle Think Tank. 
I mean, I wouldn't mind if they just kept this as a general cycle every clan had. I, I, I like the design of these. They are fairly simple. They're not better strictly than Perfect Guard draws. Like, Perfect Guard draws you would rather use in premium than these because attacks are bigger than 30k generally that need blocking. The only issue is, yes, these are really good, but if they're only for Force and not for other clans, I'd be very fearful about what's going to come out from the other units. Yeah. Because this is really strong, and I think if this is the first iteration of some kind of alternative guarding, the next ones are going to be bonkers, so I'd be very scared. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind if Excel got, like, 30k Sentinel fronts, um, personally. Like, I don't think that would be super obscene. Yeah. Because I... they'd have to give up the draw power from their draw PGs. I think that these uh, 30k Sentinel guards cards might be the way of combating what we were talking about earlier with the whole dropping two cards to guard with because yeah. obviously if you're dropping two cards to guard with and one of them's a perfect guard then mm. you're discarding three cards for that one attack basically while with these guys you'll only have to still discard those two cards yeah. and, and the other thing is um, you would be able to essentially use only two cards as well and one of them would be free if you went second and picked up a quick shield as well yeah exactly Yeah. Uh, uh, although quick shield doesn't count as guarding Quick shield. Oh, the waiting on no, the quick with the waiting on quick shield is uh, discard this card, choose one of the units against five k for that battle. Oh, I thought you put it in guardian circle. Or right, I think okay. that's how it works anyway. I might be yeah, completely I'm wrong. Sure. I'm pretty sure it goes to drop zone, but it is basically a five k shield, but it doesn't actually guard. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like looking up the uh, text on it. I'm getting back. Oh, that's correct. That is correct. I think you're right. It is correct. Uh. Right, so moving on. Okay, yeah, so we got the SP packs today. They are really pretty. Yeah, they are really nice. So this is the fourth or third uh, reprint of the Perfect Guard for Link Joker. Because that's already had an SP reprint as well. Which I think it got in set four or five, I think. It got it in set Four, I believe it was in this. I believe it was in the same. No, it was in the. the it was in the brand, the brand extra booster. Ah, yes, yes, that's it. Yeah, because because that set before only had the SP Blaster Dark and Maclea. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's nice to see that we're finally getting some more SP starters as well. Uh, that SP Neon Messiah looks so nice. Yeah, I do like the idea of just giving us SP versions of the VRs rather than giving us these SVR super gold sparkly crap cards i prefer yeah, them to just I, be the normal full art i like i that. was not a fan of the xvr designs that had like the giant gold stamp of the character who played them oh yeah i mean i did think that looked quite nice on i think it was modric phantom i think that looks really pretty on that but that was about it i didn't really like any of the other ones the other thing that this does confirm is whatever this grade one is that we don't know what the skill of that is going to be the grade three searcher for uh, Link Joker because oh, it couldn't yeah. be Destiny Dealer because Destiny Dealer got printed in the first wave of Messiah support. Yeah, but I, it I do know what luck. I know what those two units are. I've definitely seen them before in G. Yeah. Like the I grade one, the, I remember being, being a promo. Though I know that the grade two is file. yeah, the grade two is Lady Fencer of something else. I think it came out in the last G Extra Booster or the Stargate Booster, whichever one it was. Yeah, I think the grade one's called Lady Something of White Dwarf. Maybe, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is this is also showing that we're getting SP starters, which is really cool. I like that idea. We got SP starters in the set before with Chrono Dran, apparently, which I can't remember, but apparently we got those. Uh, yeah, but we're also getting they, these clan things as well, which I really like. They did have some like filler cards in those SP packs, like they had SP heal triggers for some reason. Ooh, I might have to look that up because I don't remember. And, that, but that sounds amazing. And I know that they had SP versions of the crit sentinels in their sp packs because the pg draws had already had reprints in the trial decks oh yeah, yeah so I, th I think if we are getting uh sp versions of the crit uh sentinels they will just be regular sps in the set yeah uh but we do have these clan quick shields they're definitely quick shields right with yeah yeah okay. yeah i think so so they're That's just so the exact nice. same yeah the exact same as any quick shield that you get out of the new trial decks but they've just got the clan logo on them. And I assume they'll probably also be holofoil. Like, probably SP yeah, foiling if we're, yeah. if we're lucky. 
like so they'll be slightly textured maybe yeah yeah and i've seen some of these in person that um like i've seen pictures of them when they were pulled in japan so uh on the ones from the tri 3 booster at least the clan logo was actually the color of the nation so mm -hmm. the uh royal paladin one was gold the uh gear chronicle one was purple and they look incredible they look so nice well this one's technically the color of the nation but i think yeah. that the yeah. others are also this color so i don't think that these yeah. ones are the color of the nation which is a bit of a shame yeah it's so... interesting that they've done the raw paladin one gold this time because although the raw paladin is normally gold for all the outbar releases they've changed the color to blue if you look at it and on the yeah, schedule they they've changed the color to blue so it's strange that they've kept it gold for the uh SP pack. To be fair, when I think of Royal Paladin, I do think of the colour blue. It's, I think it's the Blaster Blade thing, isn't it? That, yeah. Like, the armour used to be white and blue. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, so we do have the artworks for the other clan packs. <laughs> um, we have my pain and suffering in one slide. Yeah, so we were uh, hoping that we'd be getting Dragonic Overlord the Axis skill this week, and we didn't. Uh, it did originally have the same secret thing across it, but we got annoyed, so we put that on top of it instead. Uh, so as we can see, we're also getting the starters, the draw triggers, and great researchers. But uh, they are putting... Obviously, this set is having two Kagura clan packs, which is insane. Like, Obviously, if you're wanting a specific clan pack and you're opening packs and you pull a Kagura one and you didn't want that one, you'd be pretty upset. Hopefully this will push down the price of the Blade Master pack. It will make it a little bit more accessible. Well, That's literally, literally every card at least in the Blade Master the, pack uh, is quite accessible anyway. At least the perfect cards will be cheaper. Yeah. I'm, I'm... <laughs> so I'm going to put it out there. I'm really annoyed that Doa got an SP reprint because I bought two last week and they're really expensive. Right. There'll be a different uh, foiling as well to this. So oh no! Yeah, these these are, are gonna be different. Yeah, these will match the rest of the pack, while yours will be completely different and stand out. Yeah, you have to get rid of those. So, <laughs> so if anybody wants to buy some uh, SP doers, check out Bell's eBay account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, looking forward to the SP stars on these as well. Conroe, yeah, not so yeah. much because I think its artwork is not great, but I do like the one for Blade Master. I think that artwork's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I am really, really thankful that the Grade 3 Searcher is in both packs. Like, that that card is going to be super expensive, and well, it's going to be playable in both formats. Yeah. The SP because version of it been... would have been super expensive if it wasn't for it being in both packs as well. I imagine the yeah. SP will be a lot cheaper than the other cards in the packs. I can't wait to see people opening cases of this and getting salty about well, opening multiple boxes and getting salty about just pulling SP packs for Kagero and not the things that they actually want. Yeah, because I, I imagine that they'll probably be this like at least similar to the old SP packs that we used to get and where we used to get two I think it was two per case yeah two per case yeah I think the Tri 3 set had one per case but obviously we don't know ratios until cases get cracked in Japan yeah the Tri 3 set the Tri 3 set was also an extra set not a full set like this one so I have absolutely no idea what the grade 1 and the grade 2 for Overlord are that haven't been revealed yet yeah, I, I don't no think I've seen those cards before. What's what's the name of the Grade Two? Do we know? Because it looks like no. a retrained Neo Flame. Uh, I it don't does, think it's a retrained Neo. It does have a it, name. <laughs> like you can see it, the name on it, but it's in Japanese. It has a name in Japanese, which has in uh, bloody Moonstone language. It has the same like <laughs> ending text as the Grade One as well. So maybe it's an archetype. Maybe it's Perdition Dragons. Probably not. Oh, okay. maybe Perdition Dragon, Dragonic Neo Flame. Two. If only. <laughs> then, then you can uh, legion the new one with the old, the great. Ah, oh, combos. Um, I'm very happy that Garan got a SP reprint though, because that card was only a rare in the extra booster. So I'm very happy that that card got foiled. Is that the great? I, one? Yeah. Another card. Another okay. card to get warped. <sighs> yeah. I have been waiting for an SP reprint of Wyvanguard Barry in its V retrain since set one. Like, I mean, I have two play sets of them. I don't. I don't need them to play them, but Look nice, I don't think. when when they reprint, uh, like they announced the reprint for Isolt as like the first wave of Judge promos, which was okay, and then they announced that you know other PGs would be getting SP reprints, like how uh, Cosmo Wreath did. I was very happy with that, and then after the Cosmo Wreath set, 
was a set with Kagero taking the mainstay at the front. And I was thinking, okay, if they're going to reprint Barry, they're going to do it in here. They're going to do it as an SP. They didn't. Um, so that, that cock teased me for about a year. Uh, but now I am very happy that this is getting an SP reprint, and I cannot wait to buy four of each of these SP packs. Good thing this set comes out in English two weeks after my student loan does. <laughs> Uh, as we can see, yeah, we, the um, quick shields aren't clan colours, or they're not shown to be clan colours here anyway. They might still change up the design for when the set comes out, but as of right now, they're not clan colours. They're just silver, which I think is pretty boring. I'd like them to be clan colours, especially because it just means that only a little bit of colour is the blitz order thing in the bottom left of it. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So the other clan packs that got announced today as well, Dimension Police and Oracle Think Tank. As we can see, Oracle Think Tank is getting a Grade 2 Ichikishima card. And also it's showing what the Grade 3 Searcher thing for, for Oracle Think Tank yeah, is. Which is it's, clearly, it's, clearly, it's clearly a Grade 3 free Searcher. Yeah, well, it's, I, it's the same both, card both as the Stride Fodder. Both of them are clearly Grade 3 Searchers. Yeah. Yeah. I, both Grade 1s. Do we have any guesses on how they're going to gain 5k power? I think the Oracle one probably is when you have like 5 or more cards in hand. Or maybe, yeah, I think oh, so. maybe if a I'm card a has been robot. revealed from your deck this turn, it'll gain five. Yeah, I don't know. And I, and I think Grand that. Rope is going to be like if your Vanguard is bigger than your opponent's, or if your Vanguard, if your Vanguard has gained power, forty-one k or something in it normally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, right. think, I think Grand Rope will completely depend on what Grand Gallop does, which again, yeah. obviously, we can't see. I do really like the SP Black Boy, by the way. Like, it looks awesome. Not just because its name's a little bit silly and Did definitely did not age well. It is still called Black Boy. Wait, which one's Black yeah. Boy? That's the great, uh, great was error. Oh, the no, the Forerunner. Oh. Oh, okay. I really wish I was joking. Why do SP Cat Butler? That's what I want to know. Isn't it spelt B-O-I as well? Yeah. <laughs> boy! <That> boy! <laughs> boy. <laughs> But yeah, I'm 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 very happy that the Legion pair did get a SP together. Like that's going to look incredible. Yeah, the SP um, CEO and the SP um, Susano both look really good as well. I'm honestly a little bit disappointed that the SP CEO is in the clan pack rather than being its own SP. Um, so an SP pack? No, no, no. I mean, like instead of it just being its own SP outside of the pack. Well, it might be both. We don't know yet. We don't know if it's going to be because a lot of these SPs might be loose in the set as well as in the packs. Yeah, Maybe, I mean, I, yeah. I, I really hope not. The ones that are really reprints. I really I don't mean, want to open the CEO is and see a great. Yeah. The only thing, I could, the only way I could think they could do that is if they put these in the sets. Is if they up the SP ratio like quite a little bit. Well, what the, I, I imagine what they'd only do is that they, uh, the newer stuff you can normally get as an SP in the set, but it's the reprints that you can't get, isn't it? The yeah, yeah, the but that's still, that's still five cards out of each of these clan packs. Because obviously you're not going to get the perfect cards, but every other card in these clan packs is a brand new card. Yeah. As far I as I'm aware. Shield, I don't, I don't, I I don't think, think Black The Quick Shield would also probably not be there as well. I think. No, no, probably not. Unless there's like some... They, they might do some special Quick Shields in the set. I think they'll be, I think they'll be box top of foil Quick Shields. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think they'll be doing that instead of markers because everybody has markers at this and point. They'll most likely do some anime crappy quick shields at some point as well, with like yeah. pictures of uh, Misaki and stuff like that on them. And they'll be worth like a bajillion pounds. For yeah, no I just they miss, always are. I just missed those paper adverts for the anime that we used to get years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I remember just flicking those around our uh, local game shop. <laughs> just opening uh, a pack I... and just flick it to the other room, other side of the room. Uh, I did like opening boxes and uh, Bushiro telling you to watch Buddy Fight and buy more product. My favourite was when uh, you opened a pack and it'd be like, oh, Card Fight Online, coming soon. I've like, got so many codes for Card Fight Online for the Neo Nectar <laughs> card that you could have got. <laughs> I think it was a box topper or something like that. I just can't quite remember. Um, right, so yeah. the next things to get released are oh. the Grand Blue releases. I think that's all the rest of this is Grand Blue releases, so if you've got no yeah. interest in Grand Blue, you can probably leave now. Or just mute it and keep watching for that engagement. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this is Grand Blue, specifically Seven Seas, new trick. The, mind, the other part of Grand Blue might be something to do with this as well, but as far as we know, it's only several 7Z units that have got something to do with the treasure marker. 
So this thing is the equivalent of like um, the equip gauge. Like it's like yeah. it's like a card that just goes under your other card. Like the equivalent of like a force marker, which goes under your other cards, and then the other cards revolve around this card. So the way you get this card is from your Grand Blue skills, which they all have. Yeah. Like as guy. far as I, as far as I know, these treasure markers follow the same rulings as uh, how normal markers on circles work so locking them will not remove the yeah. treasure marker from the circle you can't interact with the treasure markers unless uh, specified so I know that the Link Joker Stride says that it only gets rid of markers on circles or additional markers that are imaginary gifts so it will not interact with these treasure markers yeah. um, You, as far as I know you cannot have uh, multiple treasure markers on one circle because all of these guys only put treasure markers on circles that don't have them. That's what it says. Yeah. They can't steal their treasure. So... And you can have multiple types of marker on one circle. So you can have a treasure marker on one circle and then when you ride a grade 3 you can put a protect 2 on it as well. So this... It... The way this is written, it's not written as like choosing one of your units without any treasures is it? It's written cho choosing one of your circles without any treasures. Yeah, sure. Yes. Okay, that's fine then. Yeah, so if it, if it said units without any treasures, that would make me believe that if you kill the unit, you kill the treasure underneath it as well. But because it says circle, that'll mean that you just put it on whatever circle you want and then it yeah, probably I won't die. I think that'd be a little bit of a flavor fail as well because Grand Blue doesn't mind letting their stuff die to call it back. And exactly. if you'd have to call it back and re-put treasure under it, It'd be a little bit difficult to uh, keep this treasure mechanic going, I think. Yeah. So this guy used to be the starter for Seven Seas, but now he's not a starter. He's just a grade zero that people might put into their deck. I know a lot of people don't usually play grade zeros that aren't starters in standard at the moment. Not really, anyway. Uh, so his skill is cost, bind himself, uh, on Vigard only. Cost to bind himself. Uh, put two cards from top of your deck into your drop zone and return a 7 seas card from your drop zone to your hand except himself so they also all have the skill every single one has the same skill which is Vanguard of Rearguard Circle when it hits give a treasure to one of your Vanguard of Rearguard Circles so I don't think he's particularly amazing he doesn't seem awful but he is a great zero I don't know why you'd run him yeah exactly that's the issue the unless unless the deck is like you need to keep recurring one specific piece or you need to make sure that you play a certain number of seven C's I, I don't think you're going to want to play this card I think this card's more there to go hey you remember the seven C's starter that was a little bit silly <laughs> we brought him back but he's not good yeah, yeah. just uh, so that was a bad two of them <laughs> so we also have Night Crow which I seem to remember being a problem in G format Yep. Uh, he was the in the grade one slash two beatdown deck. He was like one of the main grade ones. Yeah, he's a bit underwhelming this time, I think. Yeah. So again, exact same skill on the top skill. Uh, second skill is when he's in the drop zone. If you've got a Vanguard with seven C's in its card name, which you should have, uh, sell boss one and retire a rearguard not like without his name, and then call him to rearguard circle. So he's very similar to. Um, Night Spirit and Samurai Spirit in Zero. Yeah, yeah the and, game. and they did reprint yeah. <laughs> uh, Samurai Spirit as, like, with his original skill and as an 8k with 10k shields, a promo in V. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that. He's just not very good. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, this guy seems like, actually, the main reason you want to play him isn't to try and get him onto the field, it's to try and get something else into the drop zone that you want in the drop zone. Yeah. That's the what I see from him. Yeah, because like, uh, um, if you get him early game, that's probably pretty good. Yeah, you can rush you can rush people down with him early game. Yeah, and then leave him in the drop zone so you want him back later. But again, you can, if it, if there's a grade two down. with the same skill, you can just bring that out if you're on grade one anyway. So I don't see why you choose this guy over a grade two with the same skill. If you have this guy in soul and another copy of him in the drop zone, you can soul blast out one copy to call him, and then with the other copy that you just soul blasted out you can replace a different thing with this guy and maybe you get some like grade one rushing going when your opponent's on grade one and you've just ridden to grade two because they all have this on hit effect yeah or if you've just got a handful of grade twos and you need boosters he'll be useful for stuff like that obviously yeah seems pretty reasonable yeah i mean it's, it, not, it's not the great it's not the greatest grand blue card i've ever seen but it's definitely not like 
most ground blue cards I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, so we have this is Rice one of the, this is one of the Tutor. Uh, this is one of the what? Better ones, I think. Oh, right, yeah. So this thing, if there's a marker on its circle, it gains intercept. That's a great one. Does not specify treasure marker. Huh. No, it doesn't specify treasure marker. <laughs> That's a good point. So, so if you put unless... set two on back row, you can... Oh, I guess you can anyway, right? Unless this translation is, in... is inaccurate. Yeah. Which, yeah. if it is, shame on me, shame on my family, shame on you my can, cow. You can't intercept with this from the back row, can't you? Yeah. The yeah, that's the point, yeah. Yeah, so this is OP. Oh, wait, no, maybe like, it doesn't. Can. No, it doesn't it, say you can. Need, you need to specify can intercept from the back oh, row. This card is nowhere near as good as I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. This card is actually a bit poo. But uh, this thing being oh, a 15k interceptor. I don't want 8k on my front row. Yeah, so it makes sense. So the boss card of the deck, Knight, missed, who we haven't gotten to yet. But he does have a skill to give all your units. Um, he lets them intercept from the back row. So oh, they, do, they won't gain the intercept, but they'll be able to intercept. But yeah, your your grade ones, guy will be yeah, powered up as well, so we could actually hit. Yeah, which means you'll have grade twos in the back row that can intercept, and then you'll also have this guy in the back row that can intercept because it's grade one mm -hmm. that has intercept. Okay, I get I get why this guy can't be good now. That makes sense. So, uh, I just can't remember this one. Um, so Shall again, same skill. Yeah, go for it. Seven seas pillager knight spiel. Uh, same skill as all the others, and its skill is when it's placed on your Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, Cattle Blast 1, put two cards on the top of your deck into the drop zone, and call up to one card with seven Cs, its card name, not with the same name as this unit from your drop zone to Rearguard Circle. So this card to me seems probably like the best one we've revealed up to now, because it both it both mills, which we need to do for this deck, and it superior calls. Um, and we, we haven't shown the thing that I think we'd target yet, but there's a grade two about to be revealed, which I think is the prime target for this card skill. Yeah, this is also the first. As much as possible. This is also the first double rare, I believe. Yeah, that, that they revealed for yeah. uh, BTO nine. Yeah, uh, I, I do mean, definitely think it's a grand blue card. It's a grand blue card that doesn't look like absolute dog shit as well, which makes a nice change. <laughs> yeah, it's also when placed, not just like when placed from hand or anything. So you can just bring yeah. it back from the drop zone, then get an extra yeah. unit. It's if you have a bunch good. of counter blasts, you can go call uh, the Grey Two Night Mist, call this, call something else, and you've just gotten three free units. Is that so, what the Grey Two Night Mist does? Uh, yeah, but that's the one from like Extra Booster Two. It's not a Seven Cs, I don't think. Yeah, I, no, I feel like his name is just Captain Night Mist, right? Yeah. Oh, the um, I'm talking about the original Grey Two that that can just call this. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good though. Uh, so this guy is, like Max was just saying, the grade 2. He's like your beta downer guy. So if you've got a marker on his circle, he gains 15k power. On cool. Rearguard only, but yeah, it's, it's doubtful that you'd want to use him for the Vanguard attack, I guess. 24k. Uh, Protect 2 gives you plus 5k as well, doesn't it? So it's 20 Yeah, yeah assuming it's you've got, 20, got to protect 2 on 29K, it. 29k punching bag. Yeah. That you can just constantly you can bring, bring back. back. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Yep. So, I mean, nothing. Is it like reading it at first? Again, it's one of those skills. It's like it's not got a lot of text. You sort of look past it. You just like it seems a bit boring. But then you keep on reading into it, and you're just like, oh, it's actually insane. You it's you kind of read it in. You read it yeah. in conjunction with uh, the other cards, and it looks a bit silly. Um, I do like how they're trying to fill or refill certain niches that Grand Blue already has in other cards in their specific archetypes because I know that Grand Blue plays their they have a 24k attacking rearguard ship that um, kills itself and then lets you draw a card afterwards but you can only call it from drop zone nice to see if you are playing 7Cs you do have a not strictly better version but a different option for you to try it doesn't give you the hand advantage but it does give you the 7Cs name I like this kind of design where it takes with one hand and gives with the other. I also yeah. I, I'm I'm really enjoying them bringing back sub clans and make and trying to make them actual decks instead of this deck that is full of just rares and a VR or a triple rare that is very underwhelming. Looking at you, Magus in standard. I am looking forward to more sub clans in standard. Like well, I'd love to see Revengers and Liberators. I think that'd be so cool. 
but I don't think we're going to see them for a pretty long time if they do ever come out in standard. Give me ancient dragons or give me death. How's about now? <laughs> uh, so this is the boss boy, the main grade three for seven seas. Uh, that's a lot of writing, so I'm going to let someone else read that out. Anyone? So this is Lord of the Seven Seas Nightmist. Uh, he has the auto on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle. When he hits, you get a treasure marker on a circle, which is fine. And then his continuous on Vanguard, you gain all of the effects below according to the number of treasure markers. So if you have one or more treasure marker, you get to intercept uh, and attack from the back row. Which is huge. This means that Grand Blue has actual multi attack in the battle phase now, in standard, which is a little bit scary. Because before, Grand Blue was kind of limited to three attacks a turn, um, and you just kind of built three really big attacks, and that was about it. Uh, and then, if you have three or more treasure markers during your turn, all your 7C units gain 5k power. That's, that's a very medium effect. I mean, it's. It's a nice upside, but you're not going to try and minus yourself to get extra treasure markers to just try and force this. And then, uh, if you have six or more, this unit gets auto on Vanguard Circle at the end of the battle it attacks. Stand all of your rear guards with seven Cs in their card name. This is your big payoff for getting to six treasure markers. Uh, I Normally, I wouldn't say that if you have six treasure markers, you haven't pretty much already won the game anyway because you've hit with six attacks so you've either dealt like best case scenario you get a sixth treasure marker when your opponent goes to six damage and it's completely irrelevant because you win the game but it also counts whenever you hit your opponent's rear guards and if you've done a combination of hitting your opponent's face and hitting your opponent's rear guards to the total where you have six markers I don't get how you aren't already winning anyway I guess this is just a way for the for the deck to say, okay, you've let me get all six of my treasures, so I'm just going to kill you now. Um, this restand effect is pretty scary, because you can restand the 24k attacker. Um, this this guy also gives himself uh, a... like this, this guy also gives himself the treasure marker, and then at the end of the battle, checks to see if he has six. Yeah. According to the stream. Yeah. He's um, he's really really good, and I think actually, what we're seeing from this set with both this deck, uh, Siyamatrasu, and Blade Master, is that what Bushiroad are trying to do for the for the community is they're saying yes, here's these really expensive decks, here's Susano, here's Dragonic Overlord, here's Night Rose, here's you know Harry, here's all this stuff that they're bringing out, but they're also revealing at the minute all these decks which actually aren't going shouldn't. <laughs> I know it's hard to say with our community nowadays, but shouldn't cost the absolute world to build and should still be good. And there should be some really strong, budget-friendly decks coming out into the game. Yeah. In the in the inset, uh, is it eight and nine or seven and eight? Uh, this is set nine, so yeah, it's set, set eight. Set eight and nine. The only thing that I can see really hampering this guy is, again, how many seven Cs they bring into standard. But I I think we've got at least five or six already. Yeah, yeah it was six, I think. Okay, think... so that's already that's already like twenty four of your deck slots are filled with seven C's, and yeah. if they just if they print like a new seven C's crit, yeah, then that gives us over thirty, and I think that that's the amount that you would need. Yeah, I mean it's going to get pummeled by Excel. I think that's still the issue that it's going to have. I think Excel is still going to really punch it in the face, especially things oh. like Narakami. I think Narakami is going to do some hard work on this deck. Oh, I I don't think Grand Blue can ever beat Narakami. In like the history of the game. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's that? You you call from the drop zone. Bind. Yeah, I think Narakami's still going to be the issue for it, and I don't think they've got over that yet. I think once they've been able to get over that, then they'll be laughing. But I don't think this set is going to be able to give them those benefits that they need to be able to beat the really strong Excel decks. I think they'll also probably still struggle against things like uh, Aqua Force. I think anything that overwhelms them they'll get wrecked by. I think any Force Clans they'll absolutely destroy. Um, well, I think Excel will still be a big struggle for it. Like it's back in the that... day. It's like back in the day when uh, Aqua Force had trouble against Lee Joker and they couldn't do the fourth attack. So it's, it's like the same thing with Grand Blue and uh, Narakami. Uh, yeah. One other thing that I want to mention is that none of these cards have required Grand Blue's frankly silly requirement of you need at least 10 cards in the drop zone. 
or like you need at least 20 cards in your drop zone for Kakaitis' skill or you need like 40 in your drop zone for Scare Dick. Um, what? Was that a real thing? A, there is a grade 3 without a gift that has like you can't guard this if you have like 40 or more or 30 or more or something cards in your drop zone and it is called Scare Dick. Wow. That's like when you go to a playground and flash your kid. Scare <laughs> Dick! Let's go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, right, I think and that's on that everything. <laughs> this. Uh, we've managed to make the podcast up to around 55 minutes so far, I think. Yeah. Uh, is so... there anything else anyone wants to add before we go? Uh, uh, should we just look at what's coming up this week? Um, yeah, as we like good. to normally end off. So tomorrow, it's my day to upload, and I'll be uploading a Ezel, uh, Platinum Ezel deck profile. Um... First day is Simon or Belf, one of you two. It's one of us, and I know at least uh, from my perspective, I'm going to be putting up a premium Kagero deck profile. Uh, I've, I've been working in some spice, uh, taking some inspiration from the Vision tournaments that have been happening over the last few weeks. Uh, it's it's more of got it's got more of a hand trappy angle than it just being a straight the cross kill deck. Um, mm -hmm. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Very good. And then on Friday it's a Rowan day, so I'm assuming it'll be Vanguard Zero, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a couple of episodes lined up to be uploaded for the playthrough thing, but uh, we're not getting very many views on there. People don't seem to be enjoying them very much, so I might be stopping that soon. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, although, if I get these cards that Belf is supposed to be sending me, uh, then I've got two deck profiles that can be done. Uh, which will be Premium Shadows and Standard Angel Feather. Uh, I can actually do two profiles for Standard Angel Feather at some point, because it has two builds. There's like a Protect 1 build and a Protect 2 build. Um, other than that, I'm not sure yet. I know that next Monday I'll probably be uploading the MLB pack opening stuff in, set, uh, in Vanguard Zero. Cool, cool. Uh, Saturday will be the first episode of the anime, so from that Saturday onwards I'll be uh, recording a review and discussion on each episode of the new anime series, so that will go up on Saturday, probably a bit later on in the day than our normal videos. Mm -hmm. um, Sunday will be Simon, um, and I'm assuming that's going to be some kind of discussion video, that's what we've been talking about lately, but we haven't really settled on what discussion we're going to do yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Um, I'm still thinking of ideas. Uh, probably gonna bring out a debt pro another debt profile uh, this week, and then I'll try and figure something out to do the week after. Great, and then we'll be back around to Monday, which will be uh, another Rowan Vanguard Zero esque pack opening, like you just said. So that's our next week coming up. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this. If there's anything you'd like us to cover specifically in the podcast, please do let us know in the comments below. And until next Tuesday, this has been Rowan, Belf, Dan, Max, and Simon. And we'll see you next week. See you later, guys. Bye.